Good morning. 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 And uh, God's gifts, celebrate God's gifts to the church. And so you'll hear a lot more about that as we go on today. Uh, we are grateful to be together and uh, grateful that you are able to be with us as well. Uh, next week is November, whether you like it or not. So next week is All Saints Day, uh, one of the holiest days of the year when we remember our faithful who have passed away, those whom we uh, have loved and those who have gone before us. In the service, uh, during communion, we will remember those of members who have died during the last year. And uh, in addition to that, we will remember those, anybody of our loved ones who have passed away at any time. If you would like to include someone in the bulletin insert, please uh, grab a, uh, there's a small, in, um, what do you call it, thing? form in the back that you can fill out and drop in the uh, offering plate or hand me or uh, put in the office that will include whoever you're thinking of and will include them in the bulletin next week. Also next week, the uh, clocks change, so don't forget to change your clocks. Uh, if you forget to change your clocks, you will get to hear the praise team uh, rehearsal or join in with them and that will be okay as well uh, and but you might regret not getting that extra hour of sleep so remember to change your clocks um, anybody have an announcement I don't know about then let us continue in worship and I left my uh, call the worship over here it is uh, share with me together this Reformation Sunday, we gather remembering God's grace for many generations. We remember God's presence and forward to the future God has promised. We remember that we are reformed and always reforming. That our faith continues to be open to new inspiration. We celebrate the church that was, the church that is, and the church that yet will be to the glory of God.
many names, blessed be your name. Blessed are you who welcomes us and brings us into your presence each day. We thank you for this day. We ask you to open our ears and our eyes and our hearts that we may hear you, that we may see you, that we may respond to your grace overflowing. For your grace is enough to heal us and bring us to wholeness. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And finally, Ephesians 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. The word of the Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we do thank you for gathering us, for opening our eyes and our ears and our hearts. We ask you to bless this time together and help us to hear and to understand how you would have us go out into the world and serve. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. for that. I didn't write. I'm going to do this before I get started so it doesn't mess me up all the time. Okay, is that better? Yes. I'm going to wiggle my head. All right. Thank you, God. So I thought I would uh, today do a bit of a history lesson sermon today. Um, Reformation Sunday is the the first of several odd little holidays or holy days that are somewhat related but not really related and very distinct in, in what they are. They are listed in your bulletin under the sermon, uh, but if you don't want to follow along, I'm, I'm going to name them anyway. Uh, Reformation Sunday, observed the last Sunday in October, which is today. Uh, Halloween, the last day in October, and actually Reformation Day is Halloween, same thing. Um, and then November 1st is All Saints Day, which we will observe next week, always in the church. It's observed the first Sunday in November. Um, and then All Souls Day is November 2nd, and that is distinct from all Saints Day, and is sometimes called in some places uh, Day of the Dead or Dios de Mortos, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, I thought I would talk about the meanings of each of these days and uh, what they might say about our faith journeys along the way, about our faith traditions as well. So let's start with Reformation Day or Reformation Sunday. This is 
uh, a day when Protestant Christians remember the beginnings of the Protestant church, how our church started. The Reformation was about correcting the church that we love, the one church of Jesus Christ that we love, uh, which had gotten, at that time, had gotten too political and too corrupt and too greedy, and um, although there were other reformers before his time, Martin Luther really propelled the movement forward, and uh, so Martin Luther is considered the beginning of the Reformation tradition. Martin Luther was a 16th century Catholic monk who created a list of 95 um, errors that he believed the church was doing at that time that he thought should be corrected in the church, and he decided to publish this list in order to promote discussion and hopefully change in the church. He also correctly believed that he would be safer if more people knew what he was talking about, and so he printed the list in order to distribute it more wisely, widely, and also wisely. And uh, October 31st, 1517, Reform the first Reformation Day, October, 5th, uh, October 31st, 1517, so 503 years ago, Martin Luther posted this list on the church door. It was a common practice in that day to use the church door as a community bulletin board because people came to church and Everybody came to church, and that's where they got their latest news. If you didn't read, somebody read it for you. There was a board there that people read, and so that's how you got your news. So Luther chose October 31st because he knew everybody was coming to church the next day. So the evening into the night, October 31st, he posted his list before All Saints Day when all the people would come and, and read and see what he was talking about. And he was right. People did come on All Saints Day and did read what he had posted and did begin the conversation and the Reformation was born October 31st or Halloween. So we're uh, Reformation Day and Halloween are definitely connected, very much part of our Reformation roots. Halloween is also connected to uh, the religious holiday All Saints Day mainly in vain, because All Saints Day was also called All Hallows Day, which was shortened to Hallows Day, which the day before became Hallows Eve, and easily became Halloween. So the name became uh, changed. And um, there may be some connections to what we call Halloween, and uh, what the Hallows Eve portion of it, uh, in a couple of ways. Um, for one thing, the, some people believe that it's connected to Reformation Day because of the uh, Mark Luther himself dressing up, pretending, going out at night, sneaking around, and doing the door thing, that perhaps some of the Halloween dressing up and going out and doing sneaky things at doors was part of the Reformation Day celebration. Let's do something sneaky, just like Martin Luther. And so they started some traditions in that way. A more likely possibility in, and, and derivation of Halloween and All Hallows' Eve is that it was believed that on All Saints' Day that all the good spirits and the saints and the angels and uh, everything holy came out. So the night before is the last chance for the bad things to come out and have their last fling. So Hallow's Eve became the night when all the creepy crawlies came out. And I think it's kind of a way of mocking evil and saying, remember, good's coming tomorrow. God is coming tomorrow. God will win. Have no fear. God's in charge. Now, most of us completely lost this explanation of Halloween, and it is mixed with some other traditions in other places and so forth. Um, and I do realize that some people do, who are prone to evil will use Halloween for evil purposes, but in my opinion, it's not an evil day. It is about pretending and enjoying life and eating way too much candy and uh, being happy 
And that's how we should take the day. Enjoy it and be free to play and uh, have some fun. I do know some religious people disagree with me and think Halloween is bad, but I think don't give evil more power than it deserves. Don't give evil any credit. Make Halloween about silliness and fun, and remember, God is always in charge. Don't give evil the chance. So then, All Saints Day, the next day, November 1st, is uh, in the Catholic tradition, um, All, Saints, um, All Saints Day honors the saints, those who are designated as saints in the Catholic Church. All those special people who fit into specific criteria for greatness. And it's very detailed in the Catholic Church who becomes a saint. So with that in mind, in the Catholic tradition, All Souls Day developed, which was the next day, November 2nd, and was a way of honoring ordinary Christians who had died, those who most of us know and love, those who most of us are. In the Protestant tradition, we don't separate out saints. We believe anybody who tries to follow Jesus is a saint. We are all saints. And so all those people whom we love are saints who we remember on All Saints Day, um, or November 1st, or the, the day closest to that, that Sunday following it. So in other parts of the world, where uh, especially where Catholic traditions and, and populations are prevalent, um, All Souls Day traditions grew up in, in a lot of rituals and, and um, different things and really became bigger than All Saints Day. So in some places, All Souls Day is bigger than All Saints Day. And people decorate uh, graves and they uh, in cemeteries and uh, set up memorials for loved ones and they post pictures and um, of ancestors and loved ones and honor them with stories and memories and songs and feasts. People uh, sometimes believe that their ancestors can return to them and walk with them that day before, that night before All Souls Day evening. And people make feasts of the favorite food of your loved one. So we're having Dixie pie for my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always. Uh, and they feature their loved one's foods and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the decorations can become really elaborate and like uh, decorated skulls that you may have seen. Uh, in Central America, the celebration really lasts for weeks. It, it is not the day of the dead, it's the days of the dead, Dios de Mortos. And you may have heard some of those traditions. Uh, and all of them are rooted in honoring loved ones who have passed. It's not a creepy thing, it's an honoring thing and a love thing. And some of those traditions have been picked up in our Halloween traditions, uh, especially things like decorating pumpkins and carving pumpkins and uh, skeleton shapes and uh, skull shapes and things like that. Also having special foods and special flowers like uh, marigolds and things like that. All of those traditions kind of blend together as different people from different places blend together. So the point of all this, uh, the point of the sermon is a reminder to honor all of our various traditions and our heritage, different heritages and faith traditions that we share. Um, the Reformation was about standing up for what is right and saying what you believe in any circumstance, even when you were perhaps challenged or threatened. Standing up for what is right and saying what you believe and not being afraid, never being afraid. Believing in God, trusting in God in all circumstances. It was also about remembering your past and remembering your heritage, but also moving forward the way we believe God wants us to move. Always moving forward and looking forward, honoring the past, but moving forward. We trust God, and we, we each must do our part to continue in that tradition to continue to move forward as God wants us to. All of us are important, and we share in being able to serve God together. We must all share what we believe 
or we won't get, we won't know the truth that God is revealing because together we are better than we are alone or apart. We each listen for God's guidance. We each read and search the scripture. We each receive God's grace and God's spirit. Every single one of us hear God. God speaks to every single person. And so we listen to every single person. And we share. And if we don't share, then part of the truth is not revealed. We try to, together, we share to try to understand God's will for all of us collectively. We should never be afraid because God is always with us. We should always live faithfully because we can trust God. The psalm that Laura read earlier, Psalm 46, which um, speaks so fully about God, speaks of trusting in God, for God will protect us. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The psalm is the basis for the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, and our group will sing it in a few minutes. They're singing a new version of it, so bless them, and it will be a blessing for all of us. It's often called the Reformation hymn because Martin Luther wrote it 500 years ago when he was being challenged and threatened during the Reformation and being told, you must recant what you say, or you're going to be kicked out of the church. But he wrote that hymn saying, I will stand and say what I believe, what God tells me to believe. The hymn and the psalm say, remember not to be afraid. God is always with you, never failing, the words say. In flood, in war, in times of darkness, God is with you. In pandemics, in stressful times, in unprecedented seasons, always God is with us. Always. God's love never fails. And then the famous verse near the end of that song, Be still and know that I am God. Be still, be quiet, be confident. Listen for God, trust in God. God will speak to you. God will lead you. Trust God. All will be well. Our challenge today is to take up that Reformation faith, to continue that journey, and to continue to reform our faith as God inspires us. One of John Calvin's phrases, a later reformer, leader of the Presbyterian tradition, one of his phrases was, we are reformed and always reforming. To me, that says, we're open to change. We follow our traditions, yes, we hold fast to our faith, but we are also always listening to God, to God's new inspiration for us. Each and every day, God inspires newness. We don't want to get so confident in, in the ways we do things that we get stuck in the way we do things. Or even make mistakes like the Church of the Middle Ages did. We must move with courage to be what God wants us to be. Even here in Gardner, we must have courage to change as God wants us to change. We're called to listen to God, to be inspired again, to let God move through us again, and to be the Reforming Church today standing up for what is right, doing what God calls us to do. We are called to have courage and to look forward in faith, responding to God's grace and confident of God's presence with us. Be still and know that I am God. Trust God. And live today as God calls us. As God's called and gifted people, transforming the world by God's love and by God's grace. The scripture from Hebrews for today reminds us that God has spoken to our ancestors in many and various ways. It reminds us also that God speaks to us still through Jesus Christ our Lord. This week, 
as we turn into November, as the, as the leaves fall and the cold winds turn and as it snows, Here's your invitation. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is God. Take time to listen to God. To give thanks for your blessings. To, to look ahead in faith. Listen for God's new call for you now. For us now. And open your heart to respond in faithfulness wherever God is calling you to the glory and praise of God. Amen.
we turn to God in prayer, uh, we invite you to share any prayer concerns that you might have. Um, I will begin the prayer, and I will leave times in the prayer when you may pray aloud anything that you would like to pray. If you have something, pray, say it. And then as you close your prayer, say, Lord, in your mercy, we will all respond hear our prayers. As we come to an end, I'll close the prayers with um, the Lord's Prayer. Let us turn to God in prayer. God of grace, God of goodness, mighty fortress, loving Lord, we thank you for bringing us together. We praise you for all the ways that you have spoken to your people through the ages. We thank you for all the ways you have touched our lives and reminded us of your love. We pray, renew us again as you have revived your church for centuries. Reform us as you would have us be. Help us to hear your voice and to respond to your call. We thank you for those first faithful disciples who simply shared their stories of Jesus and so inspired others to follow. We thank you for those early church leaders who remain faithful even in the face of persecution. We thank you for the ways they have they shaped the faith that we know and taught others. We thank you for those who remained faithful through dark ages and pointed others to your light. We thank you for those who followed in their footsteps, who tried to find truth and reveal that truth to others, who tried to live faithfully and fully to your glory. We thank you for our church fathers and mothers and for our faith families, for ancestors who taught generation after generation to serve you well. We thank you for this church here in Gardner and all those who helped to shape it. We thank you for faithful pastors and elders and deacons and Sunday school teachers and choir directors and singers and women in the kitchen and ushers at the door and so many others, those who have served you in countless unnamed ways. We thank you. We pray inspire us today to be your church, to serve the world. We lift to you the names of those whom we've named and talked about today. Pray for Nancy and her family, for Darius and his healing, for young Atticus as he heals, and for all those struggling with COVID. Lord, in your mercy, pray for us. Lord, I ask for your continued presence with my son on one closer because hopefully he continues to improve and be with my daughter. She deals with all kinds of challenges. And I also ask for your presence with my family in Estes Park was evacuated due to fires and other families that are dealing with this horrific scene out there. Lord, in your mercy. Precious God, we pray for those who are sick, those who are hospitalized or homebound, those who are hungry or homeless or poor, those who are looking for shelter or need protection from the cold, those who are not able to be with us today, those who are experiencing loss. God, you know our needs far better than we know how to express those needs. Hear us now and answer our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We pray all this.
this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom to come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
rain is over you. So when it's snowing, it's just frozen grace. I like that. All right. I can, I can deal with frozen grace. Okay. God comes to you in many, many, many ways every single day. And God flows through you into the world in many ways as well. So as you go out, share the grace of God wherever you go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen.